And welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from Beyond Radio. I'm your host, Rich Valdez. And this evening, I've been looking forward to this evening, quite frankly, ever since I found out that we were going to be able to have not one, not two, not three, but four individuals that played a very, very intricate Mm -hmm. role in Mm -hmm. the time in my life where it it just came out of nowhere. It really did. Uh, But before I go any further with them, let's, you know, introduce every single one of the platforms that you can listen to us from. And that is Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, iHeart, and Get Haunted. By the way, that's the new network that we will that we are literally premiering on tonight. Get Haunted. So uh, also uh, listen to Amazon Music, Podcast Index, Listen Notes, Podcast Samsung, Samsung Podcast, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and Pandora. Um, just so people are aware, uh, this is not our first rodeo for those of you that are coming on to watch us for the first time in Get Haunted. We've been around since 2014, and we have a lot of interesting, interesting individuals that we've interviewed over the years. But this time around, as I stated, many, 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 many moons and many shows before. The reason I called it Greetings from Beyond Radio is because I didn't want to box ourselves into just the paranormal. I wanted it. I wanted this show to be a platform for anyone and everyone, and that includes Hollywood. And I'd like to introduce to you guys people that had a very, very important role when it came to actually casting for the people that would play us, clergy, in Eli Roth Presents the Legion of Exorcist. First, I'd like to introduce the man that brought the cast together in the first place, and his name is Paul Sinecor. Hey, Rich, how are you? I'm doing great, Paul. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on here. I feel like a kid in the candy store. Got <laughs> butterflies and everything. <laughs> Hope you're not diabetic in that candy no, store. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sinecor and Paul, just tell us, tell the audience real quick, you know, what you do, uh, you're, you're into casting, but you yeah. do so much more. Uh, you, you, you're, you've done acting too, by the way, he was in one of the episodes of, uh, <laughs> the Legion of Exorcist. Yes, Can you I guess did. which one? Uh, but you, you do casting. What else have you been involved in? Yeah. So I'm a casting director, um, CSA, uh, part of the television Academy. I was a SAG actor since 96. I'm what in 27 seasons in now. And, um, you know, been cutting my teeth as a producer, uh, with projects and developing, do a little writing. So a hyphenate is what I, I am really, but, uh, the real business for me is, is casting. So Paul Sinecore casting. Yeah. That's, and, and let me tell you, you did a great job and little did I know that there, were, there was going to be a, another little cameo appearance by someone by the name of, I don't know, uh, Eric, the Viking, Eric, uh, help me out here. <laughs> Eric, Roberts. Eric Roberts. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, on our yeah, show. And I was like, wow, okay, that's great. And then everyone else that came along and put, you know, before I go any further, I'd like to introduce, even though you were our first guest, ladies first, uh, yes. I'm going to also introduce onto um, the show, Reagan D. Floria. I hope I said that right. <laughs> it's Regan, but Regan. Know, my entire life, my entire uh, life has been Regan. So. <laughs> Regan, Regan. That's great, matter. Rich. Regan. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Regan. And and I had the pleasure of meeting Regan uh, when we had go- actually gone up to do the pickup shoots in April of 2022. And she she played Rita Strugala uh, in the recreations. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for joining so us. She has a great singing voice, by the way. If anyone here in the chat decides to ask to prove it, yeah. I will put you on the spot. On the spot. On the spot. <laughs> and our next guest, Steve Crawford. Ta-da. <laughs> we Man, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of what you the do. Blonde version of Steve, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steve, how are you? Great, man. Good to be here. Honored to be here. Thank you. 
It's honored to have you on the show. And he played Mr. Reverend Sean Whittington mm -hmm. um, for the show Legion of Exorcist. And um, he's also entertainer, magician. You're just about everything, aren't you? You know, uh, you what's a magician? Always a magician. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It was my full-time career for a lot of years, a lot of traveling. And uh, my college education was acting. And I'd always promised myself I would move to L.A., and become a full-time actor. Uh, so I quit doing the traveling, the, the big shows, uh, do some entertaining on the weekend uh, as kind of a fallback thing, uh, but acting full-time now. That's great. And uh, do me a favor, Steve, don't disappear on us yet because we still have one more guest. <laughs> got the, you got the controls. I saw that. How'd you do yeah. that? I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, our, our next guest, just so everyone's aware, is my doppelganger, the guy that played me on the Eli Roth presents the Legion of Exorcist. And not an easy cast, Rich. Now, let me tell you. No, wait, let me tell you. He was a great casting. I mean, granted, I've I've kind of trimmed my beard since then, but he had extensions. He needed extensions. <laughs> yeah. Because my beard used to be down secrets. to here. And and Regan should know because you know she met me yeah. in person. Yeah. You know, I had the whole Fu Manchu going, but you know, I, I have to answer to a higher up called Bishop James Long. He said, Rich, you need to shave that down a little bit. It's not presentable. And I was like, Take a all right, fine. But at some yeah, point, we'll talk just, about my hair. Yeah. <laughs> but with no further ado, my doppelganger, James Burbage. How's everyone? Yeah. You. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for Our joining pleasure. us. And, and let me tell you, I've also seen James on a few commercials. Uh, I've seen him on, I think it was a show, if I'm not mistaken. Was it a show? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Welcome to Wrexham, which is, yes. uh, yeah, it's a show I played. Uh, Sean Harvey, who's the director of the, the football club, uh, did an episode there. I did a bunch of social media for them as well. Um, also um, did a movie recently. Um, it's called Clicka, and that was with Eric Roberts and Peter Green. And I, pay, I play Detective Baker, uh, dirty LAPD detective. And it uh, looks like it's going to be a really cool film. Yeah. <laughs> a dirty detective. God, dirty come detective. on, James. <laughs> yeah, and I uh, guess who I know you pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one right there. Detective. Yeah. Well, and let me say this. You know, uh, Paul, you did an incredible job with the casting. Um, I, I felt you really captured the spirit, you know, no pun intended, of yeah. every single one of us in, in the Legion of Exorcist. And really, uh, I, every actor that you pick just seemed to flow and vibe with us. Uh, is this just a talent that you've always had? Or is, <laughs> I mean, how does this work? Well... Let, uh, let me clarify some things. So, you know, as a casting director, I'm finding the talent. I'm presenting the talent. Um, so that that is really my forte. The decision making came down to the director, Brian Nat Miller, for the gotcha. show. Right. So when the actual decision comes, that is uh, the way it happens. But I'll tell you, in this casting was not easy, and uh, you know. For example, Steve Crawford went through, I think he auditioned for nearly every role in Exorcist and was a total chameleon. And um, when we got to Whittington, I kept looking at Steve and I go, he, he would be great to play Whittington, but he's he's blonde. So, you know, I got on the phone with Steve and sure enough, he changed his entire appearance to really become Sean Whittington. And that was that's what I was looking for here. Uh, it was it was just uncanny uh, how he immersed into that role. Um, you know, Regan as well, playing Rita Strugala, absolutely incredible performance. I know that, you. you know, I've known Regan for a while, and the, the acting chops to do that had to be top notch um, since this was elevated scripted. Uh, recreations of your true stories, right? So yeah. it was it was a very serious approach and uh, a novel idea for the network as well to elevate it to this level. So that's what we were working hard to do. Can, and, can, um, 
You know, Regan went through amazing things to become uh, Rita, and we have a lot of adventurous stories there. And then, go ahead, Steve, what, you want to jump in? You know, I, well, first of all, my hat's off to you, and I appreciate you seeing past what you initially saw was this. Um, so I, I fudged a little bit. I, I, I didn't have much of a beard, so I put on a little bit of makeup, and I tried to make my hair look darker for those final auditions. But you flash this picture here, I, so that's what I wanted to comment on. You, that's Eric Roberts. He was the first one to meet me. Everybody knows Eric, of course, on the set. But you'll notice I don't have a lot of facial hair there. And my hair isn't quite dark enough. So when you look to the right, I just want to come in makeup as well. Because right there in the makeup chair, she filled in the gaps. You can see, uh, because I didn't have makeup when I showed up on set. Uh, and there's a blue contact. So my eyes were brown. Um, and of course, over the, the next several weeks of filming, it, the hair became darker and darker. And of course I was finally able to grow the beard, but uh, uh, not, so makeup did a wonderful job as well. That's what I wanted to say on that. Oh, but, she was amazing. She really was. Yeah. That, that was, if I'm not mistaken, the same makeup artist that worked with me as well. Yes. Um, let me tell you, she did a great job because uh -huh. yeah, I'm, I'm fugly when it comes to things like this and boy, she made me presentable for the show. And I was like, that's not me. It, it yeah. must be must be James. I don't know. He must have been filling in for me. And yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, um, it, it's to talk about that, Rich. I mean, here we are with James, right, to cast you. And also, you know, there's other elements that we wanted to get right. Right. So body stature, gait, movement uh, and uncanny resemblance. So all of these things, a lot of additional elements when you're doing reality and trying to do justice, especially for the gravitas of the work that you guys do, right? So we all approach this incredibly seriously. And, um, you know, when I, uh, when I found uh, a James, it was, I was like, as soon as I saw him, I get that's, that's rich for sure. You know, so you know. it just was one of those things and then go through the decision making process. And, uh, you know, and then we landed there, you know. I, let me tell you, uh, James, uh, quite frankly, is is way, way taller than I am. I mean, I'm, I'm 5'10 at best. And I yeah. think uh, James is, what, six foot eight, something like yeah. that. Oh. <laughs> what? I mean, what? He's, six he's one. Like, not only that, he's the Incredible Hulk sometimes, and sometimes he yeah. slenders down. He, he's he's amazing when it comes to that. And, and let me tell you, Regan did an incredible job as well. Uh, yeah. you all did. I mean, I, I, I was like literally watching like our own doppelgangers on TV. I mean, you don't see the finished product until it finally does air. Yeah. And there I was, I was like, wow, holy crap. This is amazing. How, how'd you guys do this? It's Hollywood magic. It literally well, is. I'd love to say something. Yeah, sure. I know that. Um, well, I saw a message come up. I know that Bishop Rita is actually watching us right now. So, when I'd love yes. to, you know, say hi and, and thank you so much. And she, she said hello. She, um, the second that I was cast, I was like, I don't think that I can do this without creating a relationship with her. So I found her on Facebook and I messaged her and I was just like. Um, I, I'm going to be playing you. Can we um, connect? And she was like, oh my gosh, yes, which I felt incredibly blessed by. And so we exchanged numbers. And so every time that I would be driving to set, especially on a, a powerful day where I would have to do something, she would share stories with me. She would, um, she would explain what actually happened that day. Um, one, I memorize, like I would listen to her, I would record her voice, I would, but I wanted to know what the true story was, like how things actually happened. I would listen to her voice intricately because I wanted to speak like her. Um, mm -hmm. And then I would like gravel up because I speak in more of a high pitched voice. So I would like gravel up my voice, like, ah, ah. <laughs> she's like, so good. She's more raspy. I would ask people, like, who, when she was actually on set, like, what was she actually like, like in person? Like, how did she move? Like, you know, and people would be like, she says, praise Jesus, praise Jesus, praise Jesus, like all the time. Like, so I'd, you know, add in those little inflections, like, because I wanted to honor who she really was. Like, right. 
And because I think it's, it's really important, especially when people want to, we're doing such, um, we're doing this show and, and some people want it to be like, oh, it's this exorcist, you know, exorcist show, but we are really playing these true people like who went through these real experiences. So there was this level of wanting to honor who they really, you know, who you really are, who they, who you really are. And I think that's why the show was such a success because we honored what really happened even in, you know, in those moments. And then, uh, but I will, I was laughing when you were saying that, you know, you know, Steve like dyed his hair. He did this. James, he wore this extension. And then I had this wig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to say that. I, I, I okay. you know, okay. Okay. Well, we there, there was a laugh. little thing, but there was a little thing. We ended oh. up calling you Black Widow. Oh, no, no, <laughs> because no. Because no. you looked like Black Widow when, yeah. when that came so, on. We were so, like, okay. we laughed so hard over this darn thing that we gave it a name. That wig was named Cheryl. <laughs> we would <laughs> laugh over this wig. I'd be like, "Oh, girl, I got to put Cheryl on today." And <laughs> this sounds like they're making a new horror movie with the wig. You know, yeah. Cheryl had Cheryl. an identity what, what of its own. I know it was. It was just hilarious. This thing, like, was. But I'll tell you, you transformed. Oh yeah, when Cheryl went Rita, on, Rita would because I had the honor so. You know, I rarely uh, act in anything I'm casting, and it certainly did not cast myself in this. It was sort of a serendipitous thing towards the end as we went through Exorcist. Yeah. Uh, and then we were looking at, you know, Father Art, and um, I was like, this, this is going to be pretty cool. And we gave it a shot, and Brian made a decision, right? So, but within that, um, I got to elevate. Uh, the craft of acting and work with Regan, who was is an amazing acting coach as well, very seasoned, and it, it just elevated my game. But I mean, we were, it, it was a heavy scenario because we took it, this is a heavy thing, you know, uh, Bishop Rita sent us blessed um, medallions. We're opening up as, so we're talking about greetings from beyond, right? Yeah. We, we are susceptible here within the story, right, of retelling this, of opening up these ideas of what we're doing in the recreation. And we're so deep in it, right? So there was that level. And I got to say, it, it just, it was, uh, it was intense. I mean, we, we really became, uh, in those moments, we and felt it, that we were doing it justice. The fact that it was the, that these were true stories, and I think I think this is true of any horror film. Uh, it's always a spookier experience. It's always a scary experience. And it's funny, my sister she won't watch certain movies like um, The Conjuring or anything that's. And I said, you know, every story that scares you that you don't want to watch, they're they're the ones that are based on true events. And yes. uh, I I think that's what made this such a, an experience for the the, the viewers as well. Uh, and and for all of us on the set, you know, we we actually felt it. It, it, it was not a lot of acting. <laughs> there was almost a lot of uh, living living I those. Felt, I felt the set location helped for that a lot as well. Oh yeah, you know the the old yeah. hospital um, was just really eerie. Just created that, that that atmosphere that was real natural. I mean, you almost felt like you know, there was supernatural energy around you. Um, it was you know, the, the stage was kind of set for that. So I think they did a really good got, uh, good job in regards to like the, the scout location for the actual set um, for the hospital. Just the whole the whole feel it, it made it easy for us to kind of get into character. I felt. I'm cur I'm curious, and I, I need to ask James this question since you brought up the hospital. Was was this in an actual abandoned hospital where you guys did the filming, or it, was this a cast it, or, or just it, a? It a was set? yeah yeah. So there was a lot of you know a lot of a lot of stuff that happened in this hospital. So just the energy alone when you went in there, you definitely felt energy. So it, it you know it definitely seemed like a, a spot that you would have been checking out and and picking up some some um, some some energy from for sure. I, I asked that question because it's going to segue into my next you know um, statement here. I've had many, many people ask me, hey, that cat, that that uh, set, I should say, looked a lot like a church. And I'm like, well, duh, because it was. It was a real church. And we 
I, I, I don't know. I, I guess the gods and God and whatever decided to make it freezing cold in California, that little yeah. spot of California. Yeah. And this church is almost 200 years old, meaning there's no insulation. So the stone that was outside was also inside and it, it felt like a meat locker in there. Mind you, you know, all of us are looking out into, you know, the cameras, but every now and then we look into the crowd or I should say the pews and everyone's bundled up like this, <laughs> all right, with beanies and everything. And I'm wearing like a one ply shirt. It was 48 degrees in there. And I'm like <laughs> trying to keep my cool, but it's, you know, the, the weather was helping with that. Uh, so I would imagine now the, the set, the sets were amazing uh, for the recreations. Mm -hmm. Uh, James just touched on that. And uh, I know that Reagan and also Paul, which you were in, in one of uh, the episodes with Reagan mm -hmm. and also with Steve, were those sets or were those actual houses and or churches or what? Give us a little behind the curtain kind of look here as to what happened. Good, Regan. Well, we, we the first thing was in the the one uh, that one haunted house, that really eclectic house, um, which is a, a historic site. I'd have to go back and look at what they actually call that, but that house has tremendous history, and the the it, that's uh, you know the objects within as well were really eccentric and very powerful. I remember we we walked in there and we could feel it. So you can feel the presence. Feel it. Yeah, everything. I, I, I mean, like from room to room, some rooms felt, um, I feel like, a little more powerful than other rooms. You and then the church was, and that was a that was a really um, intense day. That church and 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 Rita was and with exorcism. us. Like, yeah, we called Rita, and that day I on the way in, and then. I called her and she was Nancy, um, who played Colleen. Um, Nancy, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, she um, she's amazing. And she, Rita called and she actually like prayed with us and told us the whole story of what happened that day, like of what the true story happened. And she shared things with us that weren't even in the story, like that actual. So we were so connected that day before it even happened. And it was just, yeah, the, it was actual, it wasn't ever a built set. We were in actual places that were intense, very intense. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know Steve, you know, Steve carried the most episodes. I believe you were in, you had four of the seven stories. Is that right, Steve? Uh, that's correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and uh, some of your stuff was absolutely incredible because you're working solo, uh, throughout that it's just you you know how did you feel in those those locations you know i i i've got to just i could reiterate exactly what uh you just said and i i was experiencing these feelings so i too reached out to the gentleman i was playing uh and that's sean whittington the actual priest and uh exorcist and i spoke with him about what was going on and got a lot of support uh, and experience, uh, express some of the emotions uh, that he, he talked me through that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, have, I have a question for every single one of you. Um, we'll start lady, lady first and then everyone else. Uh, so uh, <laughs> did any of you experience any supernatural experiences during and after filming for each and every single one of us? Yeah. yeah. Even in saying this like i feel like i need to like do a it. cleansing <laughs> before i even like yeah, for real like before i even start answering this um because i didn't realize like in bishop Reed has said when i even like started the shoes like I, I just need to warn you that if you're doing this you're probably going to have like um i want to say adverse react like you know like things are probably going to happen and you need to just know and i was like well you know I've, my whole life i feel like i was chosen for this role 
because um, I am already open. I'm already like, I, I just felt like it was like a serendipitous thing that I was already chosen for this role. Um, and Paul can tell you so many weird things happened that got me into this role. But um, I had no idea what was really going to happen at the after effects. And like, I mean, we were attacked so hard after my house, um, things that nobody knows. I've never like really expressed that like Bishop Rita and the actual Colleen had to come in in like Astro, like had to come and protect like our house. And I mean, my kids were affected. I was affected. Um, it was crazy. And I know that Nancy was really like, hey, every day that we leave the set, we need to like make sure that we leave everything behind. And if you forgot one day, you'd be like, oh no, like I, I didn't. And then like before you got out of the car, you'd want to make sure that you did like before, you know, you got out of your car. But it was, it really, really did like make a huge, um, it, it did like, I, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. Like we went through a, a major like, effect. It was real. It was very, very real. And any person that wants to say that this isn't real is, um, they need to take a deep, hard look at what is actually going on in this world. And there is a spiritual attack going on in what you guys are doing, uh, I appreciate and I love and I applaud you. And what Bishop Rita is now doing, training women up to be um, leaders. And like, I just am so grateful. And uh, I realized how much more susceptible I really truly am. And I'm so thankful that I am a child of God. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what we went through. <laughs> Anything for you, Paul, or were you too busy to even notice any little thing going on around you afterwards? You know, I, I was pretty busy, Rich. Okay. That's uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I mean, there was a lot of adversity going in, into this. I mean, as Regan alluded to, um, you know, for her to become Rita was quite an adventure, too. So I feel like... Thank you, Rich. Just just trying to tell these stories, I feel like there may have been an objection from the other side, right? So it was right. a challenge to even get this done. And um, I don't know, Regan, I won't go into the all, all of the right. media, but um, you know, essentially, you know, Regan is was the third person uh to be uh Rita, you know, and uh it just it just the way things were. Uh, to do that. And um, we were so lucky to get her uh, at the time. Right. So, and um, a lot of challenges there. I, in my life, I mean, yes, I've had a lot of challenges. I don't know if I could attribute anything to uh, specifically to this. I felt more uh, empowered by it. Um, when I played father art uh, in those moments of the exorcism scenes for me, uh, and the protecting of Regan in, in that car scene, uh, uh, yes. you know, that yes. episode. Um, for me, I was, in, I was in those moments, but I felt a divine power, not a demonic uh, type of challenge, right? I felt uh, emboldened, uh, lifted up, uh, powerful in those moments as if Father Art, who had recently passed away, uh, prior uh, to this, uh, which I didn't know. And then, uh, uh, you know, read us, let us know right before some, our church scene, I think that that was actually the case. Cause I was, uh, you know, so I feel like he was helping me in the scenes. If that, it, it, you know, so there was another thing, like there was a, a, a sort of a transition, a metamorphosis, if you will. And I think Regan might be able to attest to that. Uh, yeah. And a going beyond yourself uh, in living in these moments uh, of recreating these moments, but with the genuine authenticity uh, that we felt 
while it was happening. And it was very real for us. And uh, stepping away from those experiences uh, after playing Father Art, uh, I felt uh, there was maybe something slightly missing, right? Because mm -hmm. it's so empowering, right? A, a piece of you goes with that. Right. Uh, so, you know, and now it's like, Oh, I, you know, I, I kind of belong to play Father Art, right? Because there was a mer maybe a merging, if you will, of of what you know, and and a mm -hmm. testament to uh, what we did. Um, I mean, Bishop Rita, said <clears throat> that even clergy said it felt authentic, uh, and that we carried the gravitas, uh, the integrity uh, that you know, Father Art possessed and that, you know, Regan played Rita as a very powerful uh, individual, a, a woman individual, right? That's taking command of these tremendous forces lined up against her, right? So, uh, and to do that justice, that was the challenge for us, you know? So we, I think we, let, we probably both left a little piece of ourselves behind there in those scenes, you know? I, I agree. Uh, it, every, that's why I asked this question, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask James, and I'm leaving Steve for last because we have a little picture that we can show with Steve. Um, but James, uh, anything when it came to experiences during and after playing your uh, school here? During, it was easy just to kind of get into the feeling of it, it being a real experience uh, because my our girlfriend, our girlfriend, your girlfriend in real life, my girlfriend in the scene, um, there was times where it seemed like she was really possessed and mm. uh, with a real demon but dressed up in character with contacts in that looked like a real demon. So it was like I was actually having the experience. So when I was going through it, you know, it was, you know, it's it kind of getting into a frequency of, of, of that really happening and what it was like for that to happen. So it, it felt very authentic and very real in the moment when I was going through it. Um, you know, afterwards, I would say just, you know, the, the, just being open to the thought of, you know, the afterworld, afterlife and, and, and energy and, you know, demons and, and, and things like that. I hadn't been open to it in a while, you know, just from a thought process mm -hmm. and being, being in, in character and, and experiencing it. And, uh, you know, I, I did start to, you know, in, in my life in, at different points, different periods, experience some energy in different places. Um, some 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 dark things I went through. I don't know if it's, you know, for whatever reason. But sometimes my mom, my mom, when I was little, said, you know, she said, I held you we, when we baptized you, we, we held you up and we offered your life to God. And the devil's been chasing you ever since. You know, it's like one of those little little things my mom used to say, you know, they, they tell stories about you. So that's one of the things that she used to say. So it was like kind of after I had that experience, there was a couple of things that I, I felt like, I don't know, there was any association just being, you know, attached to the, the energy and what we were recreating and all that. Um, but that, you know, that that's my experience. But I really, you know, in the moment of, of doing the scenes and, and, and my girlfriend becoming possessed and, and really holding her down and battling her and really feeling like she was possessed in those moments and, and just going through that whole recreation of what, what you experienced, you know, it was, it was really cool. You know, I, and and I, I'm actually, I mean, talk about really getting into the moment. And uh, uh, so far, with 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 Regan and Paul and yourself, you you were able to actually capture uh, what we were all experiencing uh, as actual uh, clergy members and theologians and whatnot, seeing things through our eyes and our experiences, uh, which is appreciated. You really got into the moment, which is really it's hard not to when you find out that these are really true accounts that's a whole different matter uh and and just just so that and since i see i've seen her pop up uh james i want you to meet the girlfriend my girlfriend to whom it happened to hey right there uh and i i do ha i do have to say really quick that uh the scenes that you shot when she was possessed um i really felt that myself uh, because that is what happened to me. And the emotion that you were pouring out to help her, I, I looked at Rich, I was like, I, I feel that because mm -hmm. that is that is what happened. 
So you, you yeah. did an amazing job. You all yeah. did an amazing uh, job. Okay. Yeah. That, uh, that hotel room was definitely the setting too. Just the energy and that the, the little, the little hotel room set off there to the side of the house. Uh, it was a uh, really, really interesting little, little setup. It definitely gave us the, the feel for that scene as well. Thank you very much. And, and by the way, she's also the producer of this show and has been. I do everything. As <laughs> 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 uh, she does, I, I will always. She's gone. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and, and with Mr. Steve Crawford, hey. uh, I, I, I'd love to hear your side of it. And, and we do have a picture that you shared with us that we will be sharing with everyone real soon before um, one part of, of the group has to leave. Unfortunately, they have other responsibilities and things to do. But Steve, how did you feel doing uh, the recreations of, of Reverend, you know, uh, well, I, I get his names confused because he has two different names now. Uh, it's now Lawrence Morris, uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's a, a AKA Lawrence Morris. Right, that had but, something to do with the social media issue. Yeah, uh, somebody had gotten his original Sean Whittington account. And yeah, Sean Whittington, it. Reverend Sean Whittington, which is now uh, uh, <clears throat> Father Sean Whittington. Uh, and share with us: Did okay. you feel the same way as everyone here has already expressed in I, the moment? I, it, it is so true. And and some of this sounds so eerie that uh, I felt like I was really meant to play this role. Now, I did when I first heard about the show, there were some things going on uh, in my personal life that related to the subjects uh, that we're talking about here and some very scary things. Um, and I, I'll give you a brief backstory, but I would like to come back to this later if we of have course, time. Of course, of uh, course. Uh, the, the, there were some things that happened in the Ponkin Theater, a Honda Theater, and I won't get into quite yet. But I had set out to and believe as a magician that I could recreate anything that somebody had a supernatural experience. I could recreate it. I could show. And I learned in an effort to do that, that that was not true. Uh, but I want to get to more specifically about your answer. Um, my sister knew I was on this quest to investigate scary haunted things. And she said, and her husband had died and they were, and her and her two boys were moving into a different house. She said, the only thing is the realtor says it's supposed to be haunted. And I said, and this, I was texting cause I was out of state. And she said, I said, is it? And she says, well, every room has characters and weird things. And so they move in and right off the bat, things start happening. Uh, groceries fall, falling off the couch when they would leave the room other things falling off shelves noises through the night doors opening and shutting by themselves her boys were seeing uh some of these pictures this is a room where she came in where things consistently fell off a shelf in this, what she called the gingerbread room right there i'm seeing a picture of um and this this type of thing was going on um and uh i went and stayed in the house for some time and this was during the casting of legion of exorcist and I was so into this subject. So, so when we started filming and things would fall in threes, which was very odd. And, and we heard it in the middle of the night, everything I'd heard legendary, but the boys were seeing faces come at them and uh, you know, scary things were happening. Well, I wanted this job so badly. I auditioned from this house and that's a little inside secret here. Uh, some of the roles, I don't know what it was. It was something out by the pool, uh, the various locations of the house. But the last, I wanted to play Sean Whittington. And um, I set out to meet the guy. I knew he had a radio show. We started getting some photographs and video of things as quick as we could that was going on in the house. But uh, when I got, when I got cast in the role, we started filming and I was going back to the house, things intensified in the house. This was the scariest part of all. And we have a photograph uh, where we arrived one night at the house and we saw a dark figure standing in the doorway in front of the house. And there it is. That's, that's, the, that's what we saw. And I grabbed my phone and said, what is that? And I started taking pictures and instantly it disappeared. Jen, could you please it, it, zoom in on that picture if possible? If, if you have it please. up anyways. And, and we would offer a reward to anyone who could take the, a phone and prove that we did any doctoring of any kind if you have the following picture 
and it may be on video here. It should just go right to it possibly. But we were standing there and it disappeared while we were watching it. It just was gone. Moments Jeez. while we're still standing, there's a large, and then that's where it was gone. On our left, all this brush and the, the, they start moving and some of the, the, uh, the pine trees and all started bending over toward us. Uh, and I've got a little, little picture of that. So um, this stuff was going on while we were filming. And so I called Sean Whittington and I said, man, I said, you know, I said, this sounds kind of crazy. I said, because this was already supposed to be a haunted house. But now that I'm, I'm coming home and I'm practicing my lines and more stuff is starting to happen in this house. Um, the, the crazy part of the story was when I when I finally got him on the phone for the first time, we didn't talk about the show. I was talking about all these haunting experiences that were going on. Uh, and seeking advice as more than I was about the character. So um, the uh, um, the end of this story, my sister ultimately did move from the house with the boys. The kids were scared to stay there. Uh, I was trying to move in. My wife would come from Oklahoma. She didn't want. She wouldn't stay there. It was just too scary. I mean, things had flown off the shelves, and we were all there at Christmas. And I have some video clips of this. We saw some of the doors opening and shutting. Uh, which we got on, I, I turned the camera and I caught part of that on video. I saw I sent you that. I chased a bottle from the kitchen all the way up the front yard. This place was flooded with all of these type of things happening, uh, more than I'd ever seen in my life or even heard about. So it was, it was an amazing experience Why we were shooting this show. Uh, real quick, uh, there was a question that was asked of you. Uh, there it is. Was Steve on Worst Cooks in America? He was great on there. Was that, that was you, not Steve? Me. I know. Okay. So uh, <laughs> it's a true story that I'm the world's worst cook. Uh, it's, it's a true story. So my sister, and, and my, I, I, you know what? Uh, I was on the road doing shows for years, eating out. I, I, I Horrible. When I would cook, I mean, I was a bachelor for a long time. I just mixed everything up and, you know, whatever. I didn't care. But I got the greatest meals served to me by places where I work. So it was my sister and my wife both said, you need to be on that show because you really are the world's worst. <laughs> uh, and it, this was during the strike. Uh, uh, well, that's was, why you were cooking so on. badly. And you, were, you were on strike too. Uh, so there was this, we, I, I read a thing that said, what can you do during the strike? Reality shows was okay. Uh, so I'm like, oh, so this would be a good time. And we sit in my step and they talked to me and figured out I was the real deal. You know, uh, they were, they spent a lot of time. That was fun. We went to New York. Yes. And, and Adam says it was great. Um, and funny. Funny. I laugh out loud. Um, no, I, see it. I, I know that uh, each of you have had your hands in something that we've all seen. I was looking through Paul's uh, bio uh, the other day, doing a little research that's my job. I'm a host. And I noticed uh, you've had your hand in, in, in uh, Unsolved Mysteries, uh, a show that actually terrifies, by the way, my girlfriend. Uh, she huh? hates the music, the original music. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. Every time she'd hear that, she would run underneath her mother's bed and hide. She couldn't stand it. Um, it was that bad. Uh, but I know you had your hand in that, uh, yes. the, the newer version, of course. You mm -hmm. had your hand, of course, in the Legion of Exorcist, and also I believe it's the Curse of Robert the Doll. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, directed by and, Brian Nat Miller as and, well, and, and, and so um, so was Regan in there. Regan, as, yeah, uh, major role in that. Um, yeah, and now talk about a level of respect for an object or an entity. Oh yeah. Robert the doll is the world's most investigated him. Okay. So the story and the way that that was told is really remarkable. Um, uh, Regan and I, uh, we, we got to see Robert unveiled for the first time. Remember the box on our first day when we were in the apothecary and prepping oh. up to play, uh, the Rooters. So the Rooters. You know, <laughs> I played William Ruder. Why? Because uh, Father Art, but also because 
he looked identical to my grandfather. And again, a casting um, kind of serendipity, right? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, but the respect around Robert, you have to introduce yourself to him. Um, you're not supposed to take any per pictures without his permission, and you should thank him and when you leave and say goodbye with the utmost respect. And um, the you know Brian went and shot. They they went to uh, Florida and shot him in the Keys where he exit where he lives right in the museum. Uh, and then the replica was done. Uh, and it the it was just un, uncanny, you know. So uh, you talk about it, Regan. I mean, you held the doll. <laughs> well, you sang the doll. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, it was. Um, and, and what's really interesting is I wonder too, like how much of what I went through may have been Robert. I do. I mean, like honestly, like. Did I, I, I know it sounds so silly, like, but, you know, what, did we, like, cause some kind of, like, ripple in, like, the force when, when we started all of that? Because we were doing them simultaneously. There was, like, a little bit of a gap in between where we were doing Robert the Doll, then we flipped over to Legion, and then we went back, finished that, and then went into the other one. I mean, that's a lot of heavy work in in that whole time and my like with what, what paul and i were doing like it was a huge age gap so what in what time period did we start robert the doll like this eight, late 1800s 1890 when he comes over and the origin and then he goes through a couple generations and then we're in the 70s where the Start the in third the owners of the house. And I went 70s. Robert. Wait, was it seven, 70s and then 90s? And then when did I end? Like Oh, for you. Yeah, you had a long, because Robert, um, you know, William. Yeah. So in, uh, my, in, guys, my, in our episode, yeah. I went through mm. three different generations with the doll, like mm. what um, Myrtle Reuter, like had she, him. She goes on that after the husband. the one that put yeah. him in the museum at the very end. And, yeah, um, and like my husband dies, like, like Paul actually like dies in the car. And it was just, it was very tragic. Like it was really awful. And it's probably one of my most favorite things I've like, ever done. And it was so emotional, but like, how many times did I misstep? How many times did I not do this? Did I not do that? Like, I, I think about these things because what I went through after was so difficult and hard. And like, I, I know it's, it was a lot. I mean, they did a lot in that show that like can cause, you know, tragic stuff afterwards. And and I didn't like say like to myself, like, oh, there's going to be this, you know, awful stuff that's going to happen to me afterwards. It was like after like when all the stuff was going on, I was like, oh, maybe like, is that why? Like if you watch all the documentaries of stuff, like, people that went through, you know, and that's when I was like, wow, maybe, maybe I did like put myself in these positions. Would I do that again? I mean, like as an actor, it was amazing. Like I did some like incredible work. Like I really love what I did. Would I protect myself a little bit more? Yes, absolutely. You so, know, it was, it was interesting, Rich, like just when the job came across the desk and it's, I looked up Robert the doll, um, at first, I thought I didn't even want to look at Robert on the internet because immediately the first thing is like about his picture, um, mm -hmm. as if it's just even disrespectful to to have that. And you know, and he's at a distance, right? But I had to take you know time for fortunately before so I could kind of warm up to the idea of of dealing with this because the respect was so high. Uh, for him, right? And uh, yeah. I think that's what Regan's alluding to here. I mean, on set, he was um, treated amazingly. Even it was H the Henson Company that made the replica. Which is beautiful. Uh, they did an incredible job. He, he, we, he, I, I, we actually got to see Robert the Doll uh, the last day uh, of shooting beautiful? for us. 
it, it was amazing because I've investigated Robert the Doll uh, many, many years ago. I'm talking 2004 in the East Martello Museum. I was locked up in the museum with him, uh, with another team. And really? It, oh, yeah. There was a lot of activity going on. Uh, but but I, I want to get to to and James, uh, James. You were part of that too, right? I had that you were on Robert the Doll as well, weren't you? Who? James, James. No, I, I, yeah, no, I wasn't on Robert the Doll. You have you on Robert the Doll? Okay. No. Yeah, I was. I was going to say I'd like to. We're going to have you know the you know Steve and 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 Regan stay with us uh, for the next half hour, but you know we're we'll, we're we're going to have to let Paul and James go very very soon. I'd like to give an opportunity for both James and, and Paul as well to, you know, get, get info out there for people that may want to know more about you guys. Uh, and, and let me tell you, I've, I've been keeping up with James. Uh, I mean, he's my doppelganger and, and uh, I, I see his posts and, and let me tell you, brother, uh, very uplifting. E even when you're at, at your lowest, you still manage to find something positive to throw in there and and that's appreciated because you you make it real you know you you may be a a, a star and everything you're also a model um i wish i had a body like that but i'm 54 that those years are far gone for me uh but what what's what's in the works for you you know when it comes to james I, what probably, are you up to those are some some very nice things to say i appreciate all of those those are I speak the truth, sir. Um, what am I up to? I'm auditioning a lot. Um, got this, this feature film coming out where I, I play uh, Detective Baker, and it's uh, kind of a big deal for me. Uh, like I said before, one of our stars from this production, Eric Roberts, is in that feature, uh, along with uh, Peter Green, who played Zed in Pulp Fiction, played the villain in The Mask, a lot of other uh, films, big films. Been around for a long time, a legend, so it was... Uh, kind of surreal to to share the screen with him, so that's coming out soon. Looking forward to the premiere of that, and uh, just you know, doing what I, I usually do, just try to spe uh, spread positivity. Uh, you know, work on myself, self improvement. You know, I stay in the gym, I try to stay healthy, try to stay young, and um, you know, working on being creative. Um, I'm involved in a few projects where I'm trying to match. Uh, you know, everything takes money to make it happen. Um, you know, money with, with with productions. Uh, and also creating some some opportunity for myself uh, in between there somehow. So that's about it for me. And just uh, keeping keeping my feet moving, staying busy. And, and let me tell you, if there's ever any other project that I get up, you know, get involved in where I need recreations, I'm reaching out to Paul and you to make sure you play me again. Uh, <laughs> it'd be my pleasure. Uh, in, in the infamous words of you know Mr. Will Smith, you you make this old man look good. <laughs> So, you know, my minus sunglasses when he put it on in M MIV. Uh, but Paul, also, uh, what's coming up for you? Because we're quickly running out of time, but I want to get everybody a chance to keep yeah. literally in pace with everything you're doing, all new projects along with James as well. And what's going on with Paul Sinecore casting? Well, it's um, it's a grind, Rich. So, I mean, it has been slow with the quarter one, uh, as I was saying before the show. And I think we're going to kick back in gear. Um, uh, they announced, uh, I think, uh, volume four of Unsolved Mysteries is coming out. And uh, hopefully that continues. Um, writing, developing projects, uh, producing some things. I've uh, got a, a film um, coming up uh in may uh that we're casting now and um some nda projects so it's always you know it's always something right so i'm just uh, out there trying to uh to move forward and uh level up if you will uh and um create opportunities you know i just i love um i love actors i love what they do um you know a lot of better actors than I am for sure, especially even in the, out here. You did a good job, by <laughs> the way, I, I, with all thank due you, respect. Thank you. But yeah, I don't focus on acting like, like they do. Right. So the respect for me, it's all about a respect for the craft and trying to, to find talent that's right and realize the vision for the project. 
in the short run, right? It doesn't matter if it's a film or a commercial or a television series. Um, uh, you know, that that's the job. And, um, and I'm a people person, right? So this is all about understanding what that is. And I, I think now I have more of an understanding of both sides as a producer and then understanding what an actor needs as well. So to kind of level that playing field on both sides is, is, um, is an important thing. And, um, you know, I, I'm very empathetic uh, as Regan can tell you, I'm, I, I feel everything, right. It's, um, right. and, and that's how it was even there. So I think we're on that universal wavelength. I feel the, if you will, the force, right. This idea yeah. of, of, of changes of, of, of things that happen. So I'm, I'm hypersensitive, uh, in that way. And I think that helps me in what I do in tuning into, um, actors and, and what a vision of a project is. So for me as a casting director, it's just who I am, right? It's an aggregate of all the things, uh, that I've experienced in my life up to this point, you know, at, at 55 years old. So, um, and it's a wonderful journey. So every day I like to say some, do some inspirational stuff like James, you know, it's a, it's every day is a new day and um, the difference a day makes, as you said, it's, it's very hard uh, to, to get a green light on any project, uh, especially in the climate right now. And um, so when you do, when you have these moments on set uh, or you're casting a project or you actually get to shoot a scene any day like that is an amazing day uh, for those of us who love this business and love the craft and and uh, the opportunity that we have. Um, the numbers are astronomical on the people that would like to do this and the people that actually audition for it. I mean, for Exorcist alone, I probably saw over, I don't know, probably a couple thousand people to get down to this, right? And, wow. um, and that's a light one on a, on a fast pace. Um, sometimes it gets much bigger than that. I've had projects where we've looked at 10,000 people. Ooh. So, um, you know, that's just the nature of the business. And, um, and, you know, I guess I'll leave it on this. If there's a note for any actors, because um, I get this as a casting director, you know, I always try to say uh, to talent, it's either about you or it's not about you. And what I mean by that is that when you walk into the room for a role or you audition, put yourself on tape, um, the read is, do you fit the role, right? And it's, it's not a personal type of thing because I know talent leave that room or send that in and then it's always they're beating themselves up. What could I have done differently? I could have done this differently, made a different choice, done something differently. Right. Um, but you know, that this is a, the business, the state of like making a decision on that. It rarely comes down to a personal type of thing. It's really a character match, right? What's right for the vision. And then the collective powers that be that make those decisions. So just do what you do every day. Love the craft. That's what it's about. And, um, you know, bring your best self to the game and then and we're so grateful yeah that you can see past this and look and see what was inside you know and i i love you man i'm forever grateful for this opportunity paul Thank you. and before paul goes i just I, I really do want to say something because paul has he's such a visionary and I mean, one, he really is, you know, he's, he's a fantastic actor and, and, but he's, he's such a, a brilliant casting director. I mean, one, I, I enjoyed, I mean, we got to work together so intimately and do some incredible work, like, you know, and, um, and hopefully, you know, if, if we do get to do that in the future, we'd be so blessed, but I'm, I'm so grateful for what he created here. I mean, we're sitting here together because of what he allowed us to do. And if we get to do other seasons, that would be amazing. But at least we got this opportunity. But he fought for each one of us. And That's awesome. Yes, he did. 
He, he really yeah. did. He fought for it. And what he fought for in, in that room was great actors. See, reenactments before this moment were, you know, blurred out pictures of people, you know, just going in and reenacting. And he said, no, people are like, actors are better than that. Reenactments can be better than that. They can actually be many movies like, and, and, and great acting doing these, you know, in, in these things. And that's what he fought for. He was like, we can have better things. Like there's great actors who can be doing this. And he had a vision and a purpose and he went in and he fought for it and he didn't stop fighting for it. And that's why we got what we had. And he, he really was a, a front runner in this whole thing. And I don't think that reenactments <clears throat> can go back now. I mean, like he was the front runner of this whole thing. And when you see groundbreaking material like that, it was Paul Sinecourt. Like he was the one that did that. And we can thank him for that because he, he, he did that. So he leveled up that and he is such a diverse, he, he does look at diversity. He, he's, he really, he, he's in all these amazing, um, he, I mean, you can, you can list all the things, all the groups that you were a part of from, I, I mean, is it UCLA or USC or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a part of all, so many, so many things and he really, diversity, uh, casting and so many things he, he really cares about actors he cares about people and he, again the empathetic part that he has and and whatnot i just he's I amazing, person, amazing the, uh said the other uh, so, so it's reactment reenactment so said, with dialogue with story with drama i said you're you're watching the, he goes oh he said well that's not really a reenactment uh what and i said well then i don't i don't know what it is but Whatever it is, is thank you, Paul. Yeah, it's a genius. Oh, right. yeah. Well, really the, sorry, this scripted, you know, this elevated scripted react, reenactment, you know, the ultimate vision of it, it, you know, was the team, you know, Brian Nat Miller and the director and the team that put this all together who were phenomenal uh, to create this platform for, to allow us to go at it like this. And then, um, once we started presenting talent, we've realized what what level we could get to. And um, I have to thank them for that opportunity uh, and believing in what we we're doing and giving us the latitude to kind of raise the game and raise the bar on on uh, as this series to very well demonstrates, you know. So, so Paul, before I let you go, uh, is there any room in your casting for me? <laughs> For you, yeah. Right. Shame. I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. I mean, like, I, this is my blue steel look. Right. Just, well, uh, at first, I mean, if um, if James isn't available, Rich, then yeah. <laughs> we'll James will always beat me out, no matter I'm what. Messing, so, yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, kudos to James and kudos to you both. I mean, Paul and, and everyone oh, here and you. everyone else that was cast. Thanks I mean, you, oh, that, you guys did an incredible the job. The cast was it was absolutely phenomenal in every every role. And uh, and it, it's now it's like a family. Right. So this yeah. is the, exactly. what we build to, um, um, you know, much like, you know, Martin Scorsese or anybody has their 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 actors that they like to go to right and you see them quite a bit it, for me um i'm blessed to have this family of actors um yep. that believe in what i do and the opportunities i try to present we don't win all the time right but uh we keep grinding away and um and doing what we can because we love what we do and um, i'm thankful for that right all right well thank you so much for what you did and for this, yeah, Reagan, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, we're all popping, popping in like the Brady Bunch again. But we do have to let Paul and and when it comes to you know my doppelganger James go. Uh, I, I hate to bunch. see you guys go, but hey, I I understand you guys yeah. have other responsibilities. Um, Bye, James. Is there anything you guys would like to you know give us give us 
you know, give the, our, our viewers uh, a way to follow both of you, Paul and, and James, so that that way they can keep in touch with you on Insta or whatever social platform you guys may have. Sure, sure. I'm a, I'm on Instagram, so Paul Cinecore Casting, and then I'm also a pro drummer, so you see me on just uh, uh, <laughs> he laughs uh, on uh, Paul Cinecore on Instagram, and then Facebook. Uh, my website is paulcinecorecasting.com um, or IMDb, you know, imdb.me slash paulcinecore. So uh, email is easy to get a hold of me. It's just paulcinecorecastingla at gmail.com. And um, I'm probably one of the most accessible uh, casting directors uh, around, and I'll I'll respond to to any anybody who wants to have an inquiry or something like that. And uh, there yeah. you go. And Rich, okay. thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. No, sir, thank you. I've been working on this for a long time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's 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 actually been an honor and a pleasure. And James, for you, before we let Paul and you, yourself go. Uh, I am DB. Uh, you can also um, contact me there and. and, and reach me all my information is there also instagram uh it's james uh, underscore burbage uh triple l l l l james underscore burbage l l l at instagram um i'm there a lot um i do check my messages so you can dm me there and reach me and uh best email for me is jb at epic epiq onecom jb my initials james burbage at epic epiq onecom and uh, that's it. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you both. Uh, of course, Regan and Steve, don't go anywhere, especially you, Steve. I know you can disappear because you're a magician. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to. Right. Yeah. So, I love all you guys. Thank you. Regan, we'll talk Thank to you guys. Steve. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Thank Thank you. Still Bye. You too. Bye James. You, Take care. And there so, were two. Then there were two. And three. Three. Then there were three. Then there were three. Uh, so, I, I, you know, wow. let me tell you, uh, that's actually the first time I had the opportunity to speak to um, both uh, James and Paul. Um, yeah, I've, I've kept in touch with them through social media here and there, but um, when... I came with up with the idea of, of having, I, I wanted the whole cast of, of, of actors that had played all of us on, but um, to tell you the truth, it, to get everyone else, it, it was kind of difficult to, to get them. Scheduling, I guess. Everybody yeah. Busy. yeah. Well, it, they, they, I, they either didn't respond or we couldn't find their information, but hmm. we were able to find, Everyone that's that's been on here so far on the show's information through Paul. He's the one that set this all up for us, and um, forever, and and his graces for that because he he's he's an incredible individual. He actually showed that in spades, or right here in front of you know uh, every single one of my fans and everyone just you know chiming in to listen in. Uh, there was a question that was asked, um, and I'm trying to get to it but for some reason my screen is not moving up for some reason oh i moved all the way up um it, it was uh yes yes if you want to ask that or answer that question regan sure, uh, what was your favorite part of playing bishop rita but at the time she was uh reverend now uh, a bishop um and what what was your favorite part I would say that my favorite part about playing Bishop Rita, um, if you saw the show, um, I'm in the mountains and so like I'm freezing. So if you see me like like continuing to move back, I've got a little space heater. <laughs> um, no so in the episode where we've finally taken um, Jen to the, where the mom and the daughter both are um are possessed and we're like battling back and forth trying like literally the, the demon is going back and forth between the mom and the daughter it's a jumper yeah um and what's interesting is and i'm just going to share this little tidbit of information but um rita shared with us that and it's not in the episode i think it would have been a little bit too hard to film this that 
in the actual scenario, like when the when the demon was going back and forth, they were like jumping five feet in the air. Like mm. the mom and the daughter were like literally jumping five like feet in the air, which they didn't film because I think logistically it would have been difficult. But I had that in my head, right? Like because she shared the story. So like visually I could kind of like see and feel like what would have been happening. But when I um came down and I was like dealing in the situation, it was like more it became more and more real like what was happening. And I I sat back and I I said something to her. Um I think the line was like like basically and it's not these words, but I was like not today. Like I said something just like Rita and I felt it like in my gut. It like said something right to her. And I just, I could feel Rita. You know, I could feel her at that moment. Mm -hmm. And I think having, when you're playing somebody real and you have a connection with them and you can honor them in that way, when when she called me that night after it aired and she was like, that was me. You got it. You nailed it. I'm so proud of you. That moment, that was the best part of the whole thing, was getting that call. And I just cried and I was like, being able to honor her, that was <coughs> and And you even got her Southern drawl. In oh, as well. yeah. absolutely! That was great. I was, I was what, honey? I what? Was yeah, and it's different. It's not like everybody because she's from a different. She's in Alabama, and that's not actually where she was born. But so, being able to decipher what her exact accent was, that was recording her talking to her every day on the way to set, getting her exact accent, how she said certain words, everything. It was a lot. It was. That's dedication. Oh, I, I'll tell you that much. Us actors, I think. Very that, method. I'm a very method actor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, like there, there's there, the, the best actors out there are the ones that actually do what you just described, Regan. Um, they, the, I, I actually, the first time I came across a story, um, and it was by Bobby De Niro. Everybody knows De Niro. And uh, how he would actually gain weight or lose weight, uh, or would actually study more on someone he was portraying. Uh, Cape Fear being one of them. Um, there was another one, and I, I forget the name of the movie. I know it had heart in it, where he played a, a, a an obese uh, man, but he had, you know, satanic powers and whatnot. And uh, it was amazing, the it, methodology, acting. Uh, he really gets into his acting and and you see other actors do the same uh steve do you do you do the same uh did it's you probably much, have to i'm sean whittington who was again so supportive you know he he said you know mm -hmm. you need to gain a little weight though and i actually tried to put on weight for that and it's funny i've had the hardest time getting rid of that weight so i got oh, no. a little <laughs> souvenir from the show uh <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I wanted to mention it's a support like you referred to. I was getting those calls and those text messages and saying, man, that's exactly right. You nailed it. Uh, yeah. And at the same time that was going on, I was getting support over these experiences that we were having at my sister's house. And yeah. he did a blessing at the end as we were leaving uh, for that house. Um, and I, you don't have to show these videos. I know I sent you some stuff the swimming pool had changed from blue to green with a weird gray smoke and all. But my last day there, I went down into the very sc scary haunted cellar and I sent you some video of this. And there were these white things floating all around me everywhere. Orbs of what somebody called them. But, uh, and he, he, that was the day that he uh, did a blessing. And uh, yeah, that's the pool, by the way. Um, the, you can see how the water changed, the, but you don't have to show all this stuff. I, I wanted to get in a little backstory uh, about hauntings and, and things of this nature, if there's time. And we don't have a lot of time, do we? Um, no, we don't, but we still have a few minutes. I, I'd say 10 minutes, give or take. Um, 
there's a, a gentleman um, named David May. He actually was the the uh, manager of a Honda theater in Ponca City, Oklahoma. And uh, you know, I really, um, my gosh, my wife's phone here. I I, uh, I wanted to let him listen into this uh, with a phone call, if you guys don't mind. Uh, he called me, um, and this was before we did the film, about uh, doing a show years later. I, I used to be an escape artist about doing a show in this haunted punk theater on Halloween. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> the amazing thing about it, so I'd heard, heard that, that this Punk City Theater was haunted. And he said, it's going to be Halloween. I want you to do the Houdini water torture cell. That's the, that's the act where Houdini was lowered upside down in the water tank. Uh, yes, I've got you on speaker, David. Hold, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, and locked me upside down in the tank. Or the, and I had performed this trick uh, and had some different tanks built. And that particular version was not the one we did that one has glass all around that that's the trick that's the locked upside down uh but i had an older tank that another company had, had built resembling a tank houdini did and you had a picture of it too i think not as quality picture but uh he said i'm going to warn you that this theater is haunted yeah that was the tank um and we get up there for this halloween performance and some odd things happen and I'm going to set this up and then I'm going to let Dave say something quickly about this haunted theater, if he would. I've got him on the phone, if you don't mind. Uh, of course. But my team was talking about me in this place. They're feeling these rushes of air and scary things. and They're seeing things. And I'm like, listen, guys, this has got to be business as usual. We've not done this act in a while. You know, none of this baloney going on. Right. So um, what happened was we we found out there was no hot water. And we were, and there was no uh, carpet cleaning services available to put hot water in the tank, and we had to set it up that day. So, we filled this thing with ice water. Well, we have something called a bucket heater. It's a small, very small item that you lower in a cord into the water. Takes a couple of days to really get hot water. Okay, it's a slow process. Says that any improvement is uh, better than none. Right. That's the first weird thing that happened. We. I said, any, any warmer water would help. The water looked kind of dirty, so I stuck my fingers in the top to see through the stock to the hole where my feet would go to see what was on the water, and it burnt my fingers. The water had started boiling. I've talked to some more people about that piece. Could an electrical current, could some, you know, nothing, no explanation. Well, odd things happened through the night, and Dave May was on the stage when someone brought up a picture he was the MC for this thing. And there was a big horned creature above him uh, on the stage before I did the act. Well, when the time came to perform, the way this thing works is a big pole, big A-frame where they hoist me up and then they roll a roller at the top. They bring me above the tank and they lowered the stocks off. And when they started raising me, the guy said it felt like this thing was pulling me. And we got all this on video. You see this thing pulling, pulling and pulling. And, they're having trouble getting me up and hear this. And I'm like up in the sky. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's too much pressure. Something's going to break. And I get this premonition. I'm going to fall. So I scream to the guys, get me over the tank. And they grab my hand and start pulling me over. Pulling over. The instant I get over the tank, the thing does break. And I fall and I get injured going into the tank. One of the, Because it fell like it did, they couldn't get the stocks lined up quite right. And my guy that watches from the front in case I need to tap out because I didn't get a chance to get air. Mm -hmm. So mind you, people have died in this theater mysteriously. And there's a chair where someone died and they claimed that they kept seeing this person's ghost later. And suddenly I think I'm going to die in this theater. So I try to tell a guy I can't do it. And he's gone. He's not in this spot, which is we never break those rules. He's up there trying to help them get the lid on. Um, they put me in and I black out praying and I wake up falling down on the stage. When Dave May came out later, we looked at the piece that broke. It had nothing to do with them pulling. It was totally unrelated. It was something a, a mountain climber uses, an attachment for these four ropes on the top of the stocks. It looked like someone had beat it with uh, a hammer. Mm. And I've had people study this thing and look at this thing. We've got it on video. And we saw a flash of light go across the stage the instant it dropped. This happened 
while I was out there prior telling people, I don't believe in any supernatural things, I can reproduce anything. I didn't want to say there's a ghost, but I can't reproduce what happened. I can't make the water boil. I can't make that thing that was in perfect shape drop. We don't know why this was pulling. Uh, I can't reproduce that. So I no longer say that. And that was prior to the, my sister's house and the filming. Dave, you want to say hi to everybody real quick? This is the former manager of the Ponkin Theater, the Haunted Ponkin Theater I've got on the phone. Can you say something, Dave? Yes, uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, great, great uh, show today. And uh, every, I can just verify that everything Steve is saying is absolutely true. I might add that we had a paranormal investigation group with us that night. Whoa. And uh, the theme of the night was paranormal. And uh, having Steve uh, perform the uh, Houdini water torture trick was a great fit. But it was uh, a little too good of a fit, as it turned out with the, uh, the things that happened. Great. And you sent a picture to me, which I forwarded, I don't know if they have that, uh, that the paranormal team took in the theater from the balcony. Yeah, you yeah, got- that, was, uh, that, that was in total darkness. And the paranormal group would uh, use cameras that could capture in that kind of light. And they, they uh, captured an image that uh, has been seen around the world now that and uh, what I loved about this particular group was they tried to debunk anything. If they got something on tape or uh, on camera, whatever, then they would try every way they could to reproduce it to prove that it wasn't anything else. And this, that particular picture that you have, we tried and tried, and they could not reproduce it. So, so I did uh, send you that. I don't know if you had a chance to show it, and you may not want to show it, but you have the, the photograph that uh, he's referring yes. to that the paranormal. I, sent, I did forward that to uh, your producer. To Jen, uh, I'll I'll ask her to look through it. Uh, Dave, thank you for for being on the show and um, you know your your input. Uh, I myself happen to be a paranormal investigator as well. I have been now forty years, and I very much also try to debunk any and everything that we come across. So hey, if you ever want to invite me over to help debunk or prove the existence of whatever may have tried to kill Mister Crawford here, which I am not too happy to hear about no. uh, let me know please and I, I i will gladly uh help out in whatever way i can and lend my services um what 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 is the spirit believed to be dave do you know what the spirit Good question is? sorry this is the last part I, he's asking what the spirit is believed to be and i or who a couple of stories there have been people who have died in the theater and one of the, there's a specific seat that people see a, a, a spirit appear. Dave, you want to talk about that? Yeah. How old is it? Yeah, the, the, is it? the seat you're referring to is in the upper balcony, and we've had some really strange things happen uh, in that area with with people seeing things, and I won't go into all of that, but uh, that that's an active space. There's a couple other things. There's uh, the family that ran the theater for over 30 years uh the woman took her last step the wife mother uh in the theater and that family believes her spirit is still there Mm. and uh, a lady who'd worked there her whole life started in the uh, 40s uh recently passed away she believed her husband was in there and she said when she died she was going there so uh, there's a a lot of activity there and a a lot of different uh, thoughts about what what could be going on in this theater that that experience that night changed my life uh, in that it was soon thereafter that I retired from escapes. I I know this sounds kind of weird. You showed a second water tank. We had dest- I ordered that one destroyed as soon as it was over. I didn't want to say I believe that we tried that. What you see there is a new tank that I did. And we did it at a K County Fair up near Ponca City. And they wanted to interview me on the radio. And I said, where's the radio station? They said at the Ponca Theater. I had to go into up to another city, Ponca City, where the radio station was. I was nervous the whole time, and suddenly I had vertigo. Things were spinning and spinning and spinning, and I went and I thought, what is going on? I have I've never been through this in my life. Uh, I, I'm just slow to say things I don't understand. I don't know that something is a ghost or a demon or whatever. I'm not qualified to answer that. I just, I'm just saying I can't explain what it was. But it shook me up so badly that I retired. I quit from escapes. Then I became very intrigued, and that led into the story about my sister's house. I said, please get the house. I went there and went after this show with a vengeance, uh, and lo and behold, was cast. And I thought it all came together amazing. 
have that happen. If, if the two of you will stay on after okay. uh, the show is over, I'd appreciate it. If, if you can, I, I, that'd be great. If you can't, I understand. You know, life takes over. And I know, Regan, you, you have a little one, so I completely understand uh, if you can't. But um, <clears throat> before I let you guys go, how can people get in touch with both of you, Regan? You first, ladies first, of course. I'm a gentleman. And then, they, and then Steve, you can you can go ahead afterwards. Um, my name, my handle on Instagram is just at Regan D. Floria. Uh, Facebook is the same. Um, you'll find it. You'll see a hashtag or hashtag a hyphen McCraley. But if you just put in Regan D. Floria, you'll find me on Facebook as well. Um, right now, I'm building a website, but you can find me on IMDb at Regan D. Floria. Uh, like also so. That's me, like all over the place. And Steve? Oh, so if you like Instagram or do Instagram, it's entertainer Steve Crawford. And the good news there, if you put entertainer, for some reason, my name pops up. I'm surprised there's not more entertainer or something. So entertainer Steve Crawford or actor Steve Crawford on Facebook. I have a, that's a follow page. I have a personal page too that you can look under just my name, you know, for friend requests. But yeah, I love to meet people. Um, we used to post a lot of pictures from my sister's house on Facebook and videos of the doors opening, shutting. Uh, don't do that so much anymore because now we're not living there, but um, still love to keep in touch and, and talk about interesting subjects. Definitely. definitely. Thank you both so much for being on the show. And please, if you can stay on after, you know, we, you know, turn off all the lights and say goodbye to everyone. I, I'd like to talk to you guys just for a few minutes, I promise, because I have a lot of things to do myself. Believe it or not, I got a lot of case files that I got to go through. But thank you so much, Regan D. Floria and Steve Crawford for being on this show. And also Paul and Mr. James Burbage, my doppelganger, as well, <laughs> Paul Sinecor, uh, as well. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. I'm honored to have had you guys on, be on my show and also the premiere on a new network, Get Haunted, which yeah. happens to be tonight you know thank you so much to get haunted and for having us i really appreciate it so regan steve thank you so much thank you thanks for letting hey, me my stories i appreciate that thank you thank you for that very often thank you i appreciate it wait in the green room and i will be right back there in a few actually in a minute come to think right. of it regan, nice to see you all right uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for joining me, Rich Valdez, for Greetings from Beyond Radio, and also for this amazing show with a few of the actors that did recreations for the show I was cast in for Eli Roth Presents the Legion of Exorcist. Um, it, it was truly a pleasure, and also the premiere of my show, which has been around since 2014, but on a new network, Get Haunted. Um, it, it, it's, it's great, and I thank everyone so much for being on board and listening in to me talk and having a look at my fugly look here, you know, but Hey, it is what it is. Um, as I always close every show, live life. Don't let life live you and peace be still. <laughs>